you're watching this video, you just took delivery of a brand new AP Racing by Essex brake kit or disc kit. First of all, thank you very much from the entire team at Essex and AP Racing. We really appreciate your business. Uh, we're excited for you because we know you're going to have a lot more fun out the track with this new brake setup. Uh, before you do the install though, we wanted to give you some pointers that will help you squeeze the most out of your system. Uh, this is based on a lot of feedback we get from customers when they first take delivery or go through the install process. If you take note of these points, this is going to save you some potential questions and headaches as you go through the install process. One of the first things you're going to need to do is open all the boxes. So many times our service and sales teams will get a call from a customer saying that part XYZ wasn't in the box when in fact it really was in the box. So when we pack and ship the kits, many times the smaller components like the brackets um, or brake lines might be buried in the box under other packing materials. So we'd ask that before you call us, please check the boxes completely, remove all the packing materials because 99% of the time, all the parts are in the box and match what is on the checklist. When unpacking your boxes, in the left hand side box is where you're going to find the brake lines, any hardware and Loctite. The right hand box will not have an accessory box in it. Also something to keep in mind is that brake pads on a competition kit will not be in the larger boxes. Brake pads are a very personal choice and uh, we don't know what the customer is going to order, so we can't keep those stocked in the, in the main kit boxes. So brake pads and any other accessories you might order, like a pad tension kit or brake fluid, will be shipped in a small accessory box alongside the larger kit boxes. On the road brake kits, the brake pads will be in the large boxes because we include a set of DS2500 with every road kit, so you will find brake pads inside the larger boxes on a road kit. One of the questions that we get a lot is, what do I need to do after the, the brakes are on the car and I go out to use them for the first time? Is there something that I should be doing uh, special? And the answer to that is sort of. Uh, basically what you don't want to do is shock the system, particularly the discs, by taking them out on the racetrack on the very first time, on the first lap, on the first day, and going full blast when you come out of the pit lane. So we see this a lot. People exit the pit lane into turn one and they're hard on the brakes. Uh, what you should be doing is treating your brakes just like you would your tires. You want to take a lap or two to warm them up, gradually bring them up to operating temperature. And what that's going to do is take a lot of the shock out of the disc. Uh, what really causes discs to crack is wild temperature swings. So going from extremely high temperatures uh, down to low temperatures, then back up. So those extreme swings in temperature are what causes cracking. So sometimes if you got on a completely cold disc and you get on the brakes full blast at, on the first lap, you're going to put a huge amount of energy and heat into that disc and potentially crack it, uh, regardless of how many miles, whether it's a brand new disc or one that's been in use for some period of time. So our suggestion is always treat your brakes just like you would your tires. Take them out, warm them up, gradually bring them up to full speed, full temperature, and then and only then go hard on them. And the same goes for on your cool down. If you can take a cooling lap to gradually lower the temperature of the discs, that's gonna go a long way towards extending their life. Um, sometimes that's not possible, but if you can, get that extra lap in without being heavy on the brakes and bring them down slowly to ambient temperature rather than just parking the car while they're steaming hot. Uh, we hope that helps you get a little more life out of them and I think it's going to alleviate some problems. Many times after an initial install, our customers find that they may still have a little bit of sponginess in their brake pedal. And that's completely normal. When you're replacing the entire brake system, you tend to trap a considerable amount of air in the vehicle. And a hydraulic system is a closed system, so any air trapped in there is going to compress and give you a soft pedal. So, 
it may require a secondary brake bleed after you drive the car around a bit. You're going to want to activate the ABS system to purge any air out of that system and then bleed the calipers again. Uh, we typically recommend a manual bleed with two people rather than a power bleed system with one person. And if you're still having problems after that, then you may, may need to take it a bit further. But in most cases, a secondary bleed will get the pedal firmed up and get you to the feel you expect it to have. With our competition brake kits, something that we offer, we call a pad tension kit, and it's designed to mitigate pad movement inside of the caliper. So without the optional pad tension kit, the pads do tend to move quite a bit vertically and they will rattle around and make some noise. So if you're having any type of pad rattle, you're going to want to go ahead and get the pad tension kit if that bothers you. Another issue that comes to our attention after an initial install many times is pad squeal. Um, pad squeal is very commonly related to not having the pads properly bed in or burnished. So what we would suggest before you contact us is make sure you've done a proper bed in cycle on the pads and discs. Uh, we have a great video on our YouTube channel and on our website called how to how to bed in or burnish brake pads and discs. Uh, check that video out. It goes into a lot of depth about what you're trying to accomplish in the burnishing bedding process and how to do it. So uh, take a look at that and I think you'll find that your pads are going to be a lot quieter after you go through that process. A lot of our customers have either previously had brake ducts on their car or they intend to add them alongside our brake kit. We would suggest not doing that. Our suggestion is to try our brake kit first without brake ducts. Brake ducts are a very complicated subject. Uh, nine times out of ten, we've found in our experience that adding an aftermarket brake duct to a production road car brake system can cause a lot more problems than it solves. We have a great article that goes into a lot of depth on that topic on our website. It's called, Do I Need Brake Ducts on My Track Car? So check that out on the Essex blog for more details. But again, try the kit first without the brake ducts. And then if you take temperature measurements and find that you're running the, the components hotter than you think you should be, um, give us a call and we can help you out further. Another area where we see some problems on an initial install are the splash guards or dust shields behind the brake discs. So in all cases we suggest, particularly with competition kits, to remove the dust shield because all that does is trap heat on the inner face of the disc and on your inner pads. Um, there's really no benefit to having that on the cars that we're, you know, our customers are running on the racetrack. So, either remove it, a lot of them now are bolt on, or trim it back with tin snips, um, get rid of it completely. But we do not suggest keeping the splash guard or dust shield on the brake disc. Uh, it, it can cause a considerable number of problems. One final note on the splash guards or dust shields. If your car has a dust shield or splash guard sandwiched in the hub, you do not want to take the hub apart and remove that splash guard. You're better off just trimming around it because what happens then is if you take that splash guard out, it will push the disc in however thick that splash guard was. So it will actually change the offset of the brake disc and then it will not sit in the center of your caliper. Uh, when you install the rest of the kit. So that's a big no-no. Don't do that. Uh, if it is sandwiched down in the hub, trim around that and leave it in the hub so you don't impact your offsets at all. One topic that comes up sometimes after our brake kit is installed on a car is brake drag. People will pull up to a stop with, the, with their foot on the brake and the calipers are clamping the discs and then they raise the car and they try to move the brake disc and it still has some clamp load residual on the disc. So that's normal and, and you're always going to see that. What, what you should do is if you want to spin the discs for any reason, when you roll up to the stop, 
don't use the brakes, just let the car drift essentially to a stop. Um, and then you'll see that the brakes aren't actually dragging um, whenever they're used as they would be when the car is in motion on the track. In terms of brake drag, if you are having brake drag experiencing that, you are going to know it. It's not something subtle. Typically what we'll see is one side of the car uh, would be impacted more than the other and you would actually feel the car pulling or you would see some very visible signs that one side was running much hotter than the other. So uh, it's extremely rare that that happens. We don't see a lot of piston dragging, that sort of thing. And the anti-knockback springs don't have the force to cause any significant amount of drag. They're only a, you know, a three or seven pound spring in some cases, so very lightweight springs. Um, so drag is typically not an issue, but if you do experience it, it's going to be something that isn't very subtle and you'll know when it's happening. Uh, you're going to have a tremendous amount of heat generated if that is occurring. I think that about wraps everything up that we wanted to cover in this segment. Uh, again, thank you so much for the purchase. We think you're really going to enjoy your new brakes and uh, it's really going to make your day out of the track a lot more fun and uh, less work. Uh, if you have any questions or problems with your setup, don't ever hesitate to call us at 704-824-6030, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday Eastern Time. Uh, we will always have a human being who answers the phone and will get someone to help you if you do need help. Uh, also, in the interim, if you want to explore any of these topics in more detail, be sure to check out our Learning Center on the Essex homepage. Um, Lots of great articles and videos there that will go into a lot more depth on some of these items that we touched on today. Again, thank you very much. Uh, have fun and enjoy your new setup out of the track.